10 years ago, I walked into this church for the first time. At that time, I was very broken, confused, and most of the time just outright scared. Just scared of what was to come in my life. I mean, it wasn't a very good time in my life, but uh, uh, since, since then, then um, uh, over the past 10 years, I've been, I've been blessed with a family, both both at home and in the church, to uh, not only support me, but to, um, but to bring me a... Uh, to bring me along in both faith, skill, confidence, and everything, and I, and I know that I know that if it, if it, if it wasn't for God, not only would none of that have occurred, but I wouldn't be here now, and um, and I just I just I just I just thank Him every day. For the for the life that he's given me, the the wife he's given me, and and of course the adorable little baby he's also given me. Um. But yeah, yay God. Twenty twenty was a rough year for everyone, but to me and Marcus, our twenty twenty nightmare started one month early in February. About a week before Valentine's Day, I had found out I was pregnant, and I had told Marcus he was going to be a dad. I had a cute little box set up with a "You got this, Dad" onesie to show him where the arms and legs and the head would go. And um, a little dad frame, booties that I thought that baby would get to wear. And my two positive tests, because let's be honest, Marcus wasn't going to believe one. On Valentine's Day, we spent a romantic evening in the hospital. I was six weeks pregnant at the time. And I had an ultrasound and was told, despite everything that was going on with my body at the time, that that baby was going to be all right. A week later on February 24th, I was told there was no sign of my baby and I had already miscarried. At almost two months pregnant, Marcus and I had lost our first baby. All I had of this precious life was an ultrasound picture and two positive tests that bring me some comfort and that show me that life in that life was real. With March, of course, we all know what happened, COVID. At this point, all support and network were just kind of out of the window, and we were left isolated, alone, and really I knew no one would understand what I was going through at that time. However, something came out of it. In a time where many would have lost their faith, my faith only grew, and I found my faith. I can honestly say I've never prayed more in my life than I did for that first child. And then when we lost that baby, I continued those prayers that I would be a mom to a child here on earth one day. I would be in my car driving the work, just sobbing, questioning, not understanding why that would happen to us. But however, God was always there to remind me that when there is a storm, there is a rainbow, and then something would come out of our storm. I found my faith during this storm and stayed faithful in keeping my relationship with God during this time, hoping and praying for my rainbow. <clears throat> After praying for a month straight for understanding and clarity as to why this would happen to us, I finally realized I was never going to understand and I just had to put my faith ultimately 
and God and what his plan was for my family. I continued building my faith, and one day I thought, you know, God, I want to know I'm pregnant by seeing, a rain seeing rainbows for my rainbow baby. I never really had a God moment in my life. I know people have. We were driving in our car one weekend. We were bringing Marcus's mom back from the hospital. And honestly, I've never seen so many rainbows than I did that day. And I knew God had answered our prayers. I looked at Marcus and said, baby, this is going to be our month. And as you can see, Mr. Josh is here. It was our month. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, Marcus and I were driving in our car to go pick up Josh after work. And we were talking about how good and happy a baby we were given. Marcus had made the comment that Josh being as perfect and good as he was, was our reward for keeping our faith during that time and test of faith in our lives. I am thankful every day for Josh and my family I was given. Since then, my faith has only grown and continues to grow. I have a relationship with God, and I have become a member of this church. I would never want that to happen to me ever again, but in a way, it brought me to where I needed to be. Will I ever understand why that happened? No. But God had a plan for us, and what a beautiful plan it was.
Shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. song yet tell them not to go to the second song okay some of you are new i understand that you don't know the songs but you know what you can learn something new by singing okay we're here to celebrate and for people who would regularly attend the church i am so sad because you guys sing a lot louder than that what's the matter you're afraid that somebody might hear you out here in the wilderness so let's sing out loud. Oh, my goodness. It was like, what? Let's sing. What was this? Let's sing. Yay. And you're like. And then, and, then, and then Beverly over there was like, is this a special? <laughs> Why? No one's singing. I'm like, yeah, I know. So we got the lyrics up here. If you can't see them, I'm sorry. We're the best we can do. We're good. Okay. And that's, you know, let's sing out loud. Well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs>
come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. You need to turn the mic on. I got it. There you go. Okay. I accepted Christ as my personal Savior in this building at that altar. I received the Holy Spirit there. And today I continue my journey being baptized, showing a public confession of my faith. The water doesn't look too good, but we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm humbled how God has wiped away my past sins, and I'm nothing without him. He has blessed me so much, my family, and just everything. I am so thankful for his mercy, his grace, and his love that he shows me daily, daily. And I'm excited for what he holds for my future. And most of all, to awakening me to a new life, a new life in him. Because I'm nothing without him, and I just praise him today. Thank you for coming. I've always grown up in the church and just grew up knowing who God was, and that's because of my parents and many others who helped me. I got to grow up in the church because they took me there. They've taught me about Christ when I was so young that I can't even remember a time before I knew that Jesus was my Savior. Throughout the years, I've continued to grow and learn new things about the world and God. I go to a Christian school where I can understand everything I learn in a Christian perspective. I, ha I haven't had to been alone on this journey because I've had God and God has surrounded me with people who love and care for me. Even when I've tried thinking that God would possibly not be real, I can't because I've been told the proof of why God exists and I've been shown the proof by so many people. God has done so many amazing things in my life and he still is doing amazing things. And I thank God for everything he has done for me. offering at this time and so if our welcomers come they will somehow because we didn't actually provide aisles uh, for this for this gathering uh, take your money <laughs> but uh, all of uh, all this offering goes to the running the church and paying for the ministry of the church of the Nagahala Church of the Nazarene I don't know if we have any uh, I don't know if we have any music but that's okay I'll sing
we like doing everything in one service at our church instead of spreading it out over different services. And one of the cool things today, not only are we going to do baptisms, but we're going to dedicate a baby to, to, to God. And what is kind of cool is that the parents are being baptized and the small child is going to be baptized, dedicated to God. And if the bushes would come forward, and if Joshua doesn't bring the tent with him, <laughs> this is little Joshua, who, who is adorable. We, we have a battle on Sunday morning as who can be the, the cutest baby between Micah and Joshua. And uh, I, it, it, it's, it, it's a big battle on Sunday morning as to who's the cutest, but uh, we're, we're glad that the bushes are with us. And it, they, I've known, I, 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 it seems like I've known them my entire life. And, and Kayla grew up, grew up in our church, and Marcus came and went periodically. And he grew up on the Graham grounds, and he, and he wasn't always this tall. And then <laughs> one day he came in, and he's like, he was really grew up. So, and um, so. We're just going to dedicate little uh, Joshua here to the Lord. Dedicating a child acknowledges God's authority not only over the child, but also mom and dad. Parents present their child before God and his people asking for grace and wisdom and carrying out their responsibilities. Parents also come praying that their child might one day trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of sins. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when he is old, he will not turn away from it. The importance, um, Jesus reminds us how important children are. Uh, Matthew 19 says, Then the people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and praying for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Marcus and Kayla, in presenting Joshua for dedication, you signify not only your faith in the Christian religion, but also your desire that he may early know and follow the will of God, may live and die a Christian and come unto everlasting bless blessedness. In order to attain this holy end, you, it will be your duty as parents to teach him early the fear of the Lord, to watch over his education that he be not led astray, to direct his youthful mind to the holy scripture and his feet to the sanctuary, to restrain him from evil associates and habits, and as much as lies in you to bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord." Will you endeavor to do so by the help of God? If so, answer, I will. Now, I'm not going to make all of you stand, but those who are the part of the Monongahela Church of the Nazarene and the family of these two, please stand. See, in a dedication, there is a church family thing here also. They commit to being good parent, good Christian parents and bringing Joshua up to know the Lord. You're going to commit to changing diapers, babysitting for free, <laughs> giving Joshua as much uh, love and, and um, what's the word? Care. Care as possible. <laughs> spoiling, spoiling, that was the word, but, but you got me on the right direction, Michael. As much care and spoiling as possible. So I ask you now, the congregation and family and friends of Marcus and Kayla, will you commit yourself as the body of Christ to support and encourage these parents as they endeavor for to fulfill the responsibility to this child and to assist by nurturing his growth towards spiritual maturity? If you are willing so, please answer, we will. We will. Okay, you may be seated. You also know that you just committed to working in the nursery. Come here, little guy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I know. I'm going to make you cry. That's okay. <laughs> See, I don't get to hold babies too much. So we'll just, we'll just spend time. You guys can watch. 
<laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, let's put this hand down here so you don't grab my mic. <laughs> Joshua James Bush, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God, we ask that you will be upon this precious little child, that you will care over him, that you will be with the parents, that you will cl be close to them, that you will honor them, and you will guide them, Lord. Be with this young boy that, that he will grow up to be you and that, to, to, to serve you. And we ask that um, you give the courage and strength to Marcus and Kayla as they nurture and spoil this little boy. We thank you, God, for them. In your name, amen. You get the flower. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, one year after I got married, um, I was saved at a Carmen concert. I went in front of where the Carmen called the people to the front there who didn't know Jesus. As I approached the front, there were people just like me who didn't know Jesus, so I wasn't afraid. As Carmen sang his, his song, I put my hands up in the air and said the words to bring Jesus into my heart. As I closed my eyes, I felt the chains are set free. And so was, and so was I. The time that I accepted Jesus into my heart, Jesus has done a lot for me in my life. I took in the good and the bad, but as long as I had Jesus in my life, he will always be there for me. I was waiting for a second. I'm just coming up. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jamie. Um, I have been here three years now. Sounds about right. Um, I grew up in the church my whole life. Uh, first time getting baptized. Never really been a fan of getting my head dunked, so that was probably the main reason in my childhood. But I'm going to do it now. Let's see here. I didn't write anything down, so you're just going to listen to my rambles. Um, I was going to go with this whole thing where um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my life after college. I went to college for children's ministry. And it's a little difficult finding a job as a children's director or children's pastor. But I followed Tim here, and we both love it here. And I found a job. I started working with Tanya at her office uh, where she is a pediatrician. I am not qualified for anything in pediatrics, but I worked there, and that was amazing. And then I found work at a daycare where Michelle now works, too. Um, it's I was really confused for a really long time what God's plan was. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do with all this children's ministry degree? But um, I feel in a lot of ways 
that working at a daycare has been a ginormous blessing. Not only in learning about, sorry, not only in learning how to take care of different types of kids, but also in preparing me for being a mother. Um, I just feel like this has all been part of his plan. <sighs> and that's mostly why I'm here. So, that's about it. Hello. Most of you don't know why I'm here. Well, I've got a story for that. Around when I was a kid, I was told all about God, about the amazing things he can do. Well, throughout the years, as a child, I've been sent to schools where I was told that God hates people with autism and whatnot. And that disappointed me. And so, further through the years, of all the schools I've been to that were terrible, I got in the Bible. And I was told a lot of good things. I started reading it. And I couldn't believe all the great things that God has done for everyone, regardless of who you are. And that he just loves all of us. He has a plan for all of us. There's no doubt about it. Now, for when I first coming here, I believe I was 14, 15, or 16. It's hard to believe I've been here for so many years. I felt like... I can count on everyone here at the church to be like a family member to me. And I'm just glad I've been accepted into this church, accepted for who I am, regardless. And no matter what, I feel like God will always be there for me, will always love me for who I am. And I'm just so proud to be here. And Sorry, I'm not really good at giving speeches. I... I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you all for accepting me here into this church. This wonderful place, all of you, it really makes me feel appreciated, wanted, accepted. God be with us all. Praise his glory. Amen. Okay, so my testimony is through song. We're sorry, Raymond got the wrong song. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, we're sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> may not be easy and everything that I need you've already given me I remember how you told me I can trust you completely so I am I doubting when you prove that 
that you'd fight for me. You walk me through fires, pulled me from flames. If you're in this with me, I won't be afraid. When the smoke billows higher, oh, and higher, and it feels like I Changed by your mercy, I'm covered by your peace. I'm living out the victory, doesn't mean I won't feel the heat. You've walked me through fire. of my redemption Lord how could I question when you prove that you die for me you walk me through fire If you have your Bibles or your phones, we're going to, and if you can see it, it might be up there as well. John 1, 6 through 8. I'll give you a second to get there. Let's read. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Turn to John 1, 15 through 18 as well, please. Let's read. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. 
For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father he made, has made himself known. The passage of scripture that Timothy uh, read was uh, about, it came from John the Baptist. It's just in the book of John. It was about a guy named John the Baptist. And John was a kind of an interesting young, uh, young man. He was, he was young. He was the same age as Jesus, born just, right, was just a little bit before Jesus was born. And John loved rivers. And John had long hair, and John was scruffy, and John, that's right, John was a hippie. I know. And I'm pretty sure if John the Baptist came knocking on your door, I'm pretty sure you would not be answering the door of this man because he is different. John was different. He was very different. He was, he was different because he was sent to give a message to the world that was radical. It was an outrageous message. It was a message that no one ever heard before. And at the time that G John was preaching, no one understood, and I don't even think un John understood, how the world was going to be radically changed within three years. John didn't even understand the message he was preaching. He just knew that he needed to preach this message. He was radically serving God and knew he had to preach an outrageous message. And this morning, I kind of want to tell you what this outrageous message is all about. <clears throat> John was telling the people to repent. Now, when we learn about ways to repent, this is the idea that we get. This loud preacher standing up there telling you you're all going to go someplace that's very warm and scare you, and then at the end he yells real loud to repent, and then everybody comes to an altar and repents. But that's not what repentance is. This, is, this understanding of repentance was an outrageous understanding and teaching. See, up to this point in history, the way we ran our lives, the way we knew what salvation was, was through a book. You, went to the, you, you, you learned about the law, you went to the temple, you had sacrifices, and you did the best you could. You lived the way that you thought was right. You lived the way that you thought uh, gee, God was trying to teach you. You lived according to a bunch of rules. And now John is saying, look, those rules do matter, but something else is different. Something else needs to happen in your life. And John was telling them that one was coming that would take away the sins of the world, that he would unconditionally and willingly go to a cross, that whoever believes in him will not die but have everlasting life. This was a radical message. Got to understand this concept of not dying and have everlasting life. It's not just about eternity. It's about understanding what repentance is, how that changes our lives today, and how this message of, of change can affect and make and focus our lives in a direction that God wants all people to live. And that direction is a life of love, a life, a, a life of reconciliation, a life of forgiveness. This message of repentance does not call us into a life of strict rules like some people think that the church is. If I go to the church, then I can't do all these things. That's probably true. The reason why is you learn that through Jesus, that's not good for you. Animosity is not good for you. Anger is not good for you. And what the church has done, is, what this whole aspect of repentance has done, it has taught us to understand that these things that destroy our lives can be fixed within us through the repentance, through Jesus' sacrifice on a cross. We can learn to live in a life of love, appreciation, forgiveness, 
and we can learn what that means throughout the world and in our lives. Repentance is hope. It is hope in action. The people, uh, John and the people at the River Jordan uh, really needed some hope in their lives. And I think with what we have gone through in the past few years, we need some hope. And I'm going to tell you, can't get hope out of a bottle, can't get hope from television, and you can't get hope by being an angry, nasty person. The only way you're going to have hope is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That relationship brings hope into our lives, and we can see what's happening in the world, and we know a secret, that it's all going to turn out for good in the end. These, this hope comes through the confessing of their sins. See, repentance in action is the confession of sins. As, as they were confessing their sins, John was taking them into the water and baptizing them. Baptizing, which we are going to experience today, is a symbol of recognition that God, I have given my life over to the work of Jesus. I have asked for the forgiveness of sin, and Jesus, and I, and Jesus has come into my life, and now I have not this rules-oriented relationship, but now I have this experience with him, this powerful experience with Jesus that is so powerful it changes who I am. And I understand that more to life than this physical world, but there is this spiritual reality that I have never experienced before in my life. Baptizing someone in water symbolizes how a person's sins are washed away through the acceptance of the outrageous message of repentance. They were no longer bound by sin, but free to do what God intended them to do to be pure, holy, and to live in a love relationship with him and the people around us. Baptism is the symbol of washing away of the old, the cleansing of a person from the sin within their lives. This symbol of baptism replaced the old symbol of the law. Baptism symbolizes the covenant that was made over 2,000 years ago between God and his creation through the agonizing death of his one and only son, Jesus. Jesus did not come to keep the traditions of the world. He came to, not to keep the status quo. He came to radically alter the world. And he came, he, had, he did not come to share a message that was for the church only. He came to make sure that this radical message of repentance would change the entire world. Baptism symbolizes his death. He was, the, the sins were washed away. Um, it symbolizes his death has washed away the bonds of sin for everyone who chooses to accept this outrageous message of repentance. The act of baptism itself does not save us. It only makes us wet. <laughs> the relationship, that's why the testimonies came first, the relationship with Jesus saves us, and the symbolism of baptism is publicly announcing that I have a true experience with Jesus. The worst thing that we can do is to fool ourselves that a set, following a set of rules or being good will get us into heaven. This outrageous message of repentance is called to a radical lifestyle change. We no longer live our lives to serve ourselves. Our whole view of life is focused on the cross and the blood that was spilled for our sins. Without repentance, we cannot have eternal life. Repentance means that we accept that we are sinners. We know that our sins cannot be forgiven without the cross, and we ask Jesus, we ask Christ to forgive us, and when we do that, he will. Today, we are celebrating the covenant God made with his people through the cross. These men and women in front of you have confessed their, with their tongues that Jesus Christ has forgiven them of their sins, and they now live a life of outrageous repentance. They have powerfully, they, they have powerfully told us how this message of repentance changed their lives and now gives them hope. 
Now is a time of celebration. It's a time to whoop it up, okay? If you don't know how to whoop it up, this is what you need to be thinking of, okay? I'm sorry, okay? This is, this is, this is really hard for me to say, okay? You're thinking that it's the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, okay? The, 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 the Steelers, I was gonna say the Browns, <coughs> but that's okay, because you, you say that's what would happen if you did that. Steelers are on, 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 on the opposing team's 10-yard line, Less than a minute ago, Ben Roethlisberger drops back, throws a pass, touchdown, and what do you guys all do? Whoop you whoop it up. <laughs> and I'm sure you will not be in your home sitting there saying, oh, how nice, that's seven. <laughs> you, know, you would be screaming, horns would be blowing. We've all experienced this in this city a few years ago. That is what we are supposed to be doing when someone is baptizing. We are supposed to be cheering and praising God what he has done for the person's life. It is time to shout the praises of God so that all of Monongahela will hear us. So when each person comes up out of the water, one of the first things they should be hearing is an uproar of cheers because they are acknowledging that the, the most important thing in their life has occurred, and that is they have entered in to a new relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is more important than another Steelers Super Bowl victory. Sorry to break your hearts, but that is the truth. And so this morning we are here to celebrate through, the, through baptism, the washing away of sins and the renewed hope that it's come to the, each person. And, and we, hey, listen, listen, I want it to be loud. It is the greatest moment of a person's life so let's cheer louder than we have ever cheered before. Uh, there's a man who used, to be, who, who used to attend our church. He's gone on to be with God, um, Bob Douglas. And, and I told, we used to have service here at the church, and then we'd go someplace to be baptized. Uh, we went to the, the McCarty's house one time, went to a pool in my backyard. We've never gone down to the river. We will never go down to the river. <laughs> I will not go down to the river, even though some of you swam in the river <laughs> as a kid, I will not be baptizing anybody in the river. But, but at, at one of the baptisms, uh, so, somebody came up out of the water, all of a sudden Bob just let out this big old scream. And that's what we should be doing, praising God for what he has done in that person's life. We're going to, we're going to sing a song and um, pray. And pray. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, we're going to change the order of service just a bit. <laughs> I would like those who are being baptized, if you are able to kneel at these benches, and I'm going to pray for you, and then we will sing a song. Hey, Emma and Raymond. <laughs> My son is, is, is off doing, there's Emma. And Raymond, the, the video projection and all these wires coming out of the windows, that's my son. <laughs> and so you haven't seen him much except he, he fl flew in here real quick. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Go by Robin. <laughs> Where do I go? Where do I go? <laughs> That's okay. All right. Let's pray. Lord, these men and women kneeling before you, they are acknowledging that they have accepted Christ into their lives. They acknowledge that you have saved them from their sins. They have entered into an experience with you, not an experience of rules and regulations, but an experience of love. Lord, we thank you for these, these men and women. We thank you for what you are doing in their lives. We thank you for the gift of salvation because we cannot have life. We cannot experience true love until we are in relationship with you. And Lord, through this time, allow the Holy Spirit to move upon us in a powerful way. Allow any distractions 
to just leave and that we become centered on the work of Jesus in each individual's life. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, God, in your name. Amen. You can go back to your seats.
Hello. All right, just hold it right here. Just yeah, just hold it right up to my mouth there. All right, Michelle, you're gonna enjoy this. <laughs> Is it warm? Oh, I don't think so. It's nice and cold. <laughs> it's nice and cold. Michelle, have you repented of your sins and have you do you acknowledge that you are in experience with Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes. We baptize you, Michelle, in the name of the Father, Son. Acknowledge that you have repented of your sins and have entered into an experience with Jesus. Yes. We, Marcus, we baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
reaction. So <laughs> I'm not here for it today. <laughs> Why don't we stand as we sing our last song? Before I pray to uh, end the service, smell that, smell that grill, mmm, something smells good, all right, let's pray, dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us to come celebrate everything you have done in our lives, and celebrate the lives, 
what you have done in the lives of the people that got baptized. Be with us now as we possibly go our separate ways. Also, bless the food that is smelling oh so good that, uh, that we are about to eat. And bless the fellowship that we will share together. Just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Enjoy this day God has created for you. Means are dismissed.